Hi, thanks for tuning in to my very first video for my channel. My name is Mark Gillespie and the series is called The Living Room With You. So thanks for tuning in, um, as I said my name's Mark, I'm 46, I live in Glasgow, Scotland and this is going to be a video series that I'm entitling The Living Room Luthier and it's going to cover my work for my unofficial entry into the Great Guitar Build Off. So let, you explain, let me explain what I've got, um, what I'm intending in building and you can follow me the next few weeks you'll see me um, building the guitar and hopefully you'll see good points, bad points, you'll see a few workarounds um, you'll see um, I'm pretty much going to take a what's and all um, approach to it there's a lot of the guys that do the videos out new, um, that I've watched on YouTube and they make it look really really easy and it's not until you actually start doing it when you realise there's there's quite a bit more to it um, so I'm, I'm going to take a what's and all approach and I'll, I'll just, you know, what, the good, the bad and the ugly um, I'll, I'll let you see that so, body wise, the guitar that I've always I've always admired PRS um, guitars. I've I've always loved the you know the carves on them. They're just they're beautiful guitars, and I've decided that that's that's what I'm going to do for myself. I've always this doing this build is kind of like scratching an itch that I've always had for about you know twenty odd years. I've always wanted to build a guitar. I've never had the the time or the motivation to do it um, so about 18 months ago I started at college uh, just to do a guitar restoration course <clears throat> just to maintain my own guitars and, and do that kind of thing and that kind of it's just kind of snowballed from there I had no intention of actually going ahead and building a guitar no intention whatsoever but when I started working on a bench and uh, the first um, restoration job I'd done was in that one my, my uh, Epiphone Explorer um, and there's photographs of that, that restoration on my Facebook page if you want to go and check it out I'll leave a link in the description below um, but as soon as I started working on it I realised that this is something that I really wanted to do so hopefully the intention of doing this video series is to show what I'm doing just now but hopefully I'll inspire maybe one or two years to, to, to take it up Maybe check out your local colleges or universities and see if there's any guitar restoration courses because it's a really worthwhile pastime. So where I'm at just now, um, I've got a Sapele mahogany um, body. Um, I bought this body blank. Um, it was uh, the start of 2019. Um, I left it, let it season for probably about two, three months, let it acclimatise, and then what I done was I flattened it out. Um, got it to got it to the right thickness. Um, when I was going to college, um, I was doing the rest, the beginner restoration course, and then I started doing the advanced one. But I was actually using the advanced course in the the college time to actually start to build. So, um, that's what I'd done. At that point, I had cut the body shape out. Um, my friend Peter was good enough to um let me come over and use his router table because I didn't have a router table at the time or a router for that matter um, so cut out the body shape when I was at college I've used my templates and what I've done was I've cut out the neck pocket the control cavities back and front and that was pretty much it um, that was where I had got to when the you know the global pandemic kicked in and I was kind of getting built up ahead of steam and I really wanted to keep on going but I didn't have a facility to do that. So what I done was I ended up building a workbench. And I've designed and built this workbench that, I'm going to, that you're going to see at home. Um, it is in my living room. It pretty much it only takes up, it's less than a metre square um, each way. Uh, well, a metre. It's less than a metre out and less than a metre across. So it's quite compact, but it's enough room for me to actually work and I can, I'll see what I can do 
um, and you'll you'll see that too. Um, so that's the body. Um, moving on from that, I have got a piece of enduring mahogany. Just take the trust shot out. Got a piece of enduring mahogany. Again, I bought this last year. Um, let it season for a few months. Just let it let it acclimatise, and then um, I cut the the next shape out at college. Um, checked this against my straight edge uh, a few nights ago and it's still dead straight so I know that there's not going to be any warping or anything like that I do need to watch however I've still got material that I need to take off at the sides um, the headstock side of things I'm not too worried about and I've only got a wee bit of wood that I need to take off at the heel um, but it's already kind of cut into the rough shape um, that I need I've got all my, all my lines are all marked out um, and so that's that's ready to go um, I've got a truss rod, a hot rod style truss rod that'll go in, um, that'll go in there, that's going to sit in. Um, means I don't have to mess around with any, um, you know, finishing off any con uh, control cavity here um, to actually access the truss rod. I've never really liked the, the truss rod up at that end anyway. When I've seen the hot rods, it just make, for me it just makes sense. And um, we have it down at this end of the fretboard. Um, fretboard wise, I've got a lovely piece of flamed mahogany. I'm trying to catch the light on that with the camera to see. You might not be able to see that too well. Um, but it's got a gorgeous flame on it. Um, again, bought this last year. Um, let it season and then I cut it down to rough thickness. Um, at this point, that ends 9.3 mil. And I'm at 10.25 that side, 10.25 and 9.1. So it's still a wee bit to go, it's still a bit to take off of that. But again, I had to let it just season, just make sure that I don't get any warps, any twists, anything like that. Then it gives me the opportunity to scrap it and get another piece. But that seems to be okay. I've also got a really nice design that I'm going to be putting across the 11th, 12th and 13th frets. Um, more on that later. Um, so this is going to be the piece of wood that I'm going to use. Um, can't wait because I'm doing a dark colour on the front of it and the light wood will, will be a really nice contrast. Um, hardware wise, going from the, the back of the guitar, I've got a genuine um, Wilkinson uh, bridge. So I've never never played in one of these. Um, they get a really good write up. So, you know, um, having a look at some of the earlier PRS style uh, or PRS guitars, a bridge similar to this, so that's the one that I'm going to go with. Get that. Um, for the control knobs, I've just got standard chrome um, control knobs just now. That might change, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but me, the for the headstock side of things, um, my friend Bobby was he was on I think it was Facebook Marketplace, I noticed he posted up. Um, he was selling a set of P genuine PRS locking tuners and he was looking for a, it was a, a Hiscock case I think it was I had one anyway for my Bernalus Paul um, which wasn't getting used because it hangs up uh, hangs up in the wall so um, I wasn't using it and I was like well I'm building a guitar do you want to trade and he was, he was happy enough so I've got a set of genuine PRS if you can see that Genuine PRS, there you go. Genuine PRS lock and tuner. So quite excited about them. That will give me good tuning stability. Um, <clears throat> pickup wise, I do have a set of pickups that I'm going to use. I've done a restoration. I've done an upgrade on my Burnley Paul uh, last year. So I've taken the um, the chrome plated pickups from that. They're pretty good. Um, so I'm going to put them in it. And that pretty much covers the hardware. Um, I've still to order in my stainless. I'm still debating whether I'm going to go stainless steel or uh, nickel frets. I want it to. Like, if I'm going to do a job like this, I'll probably go stainless steel. Um, I know it's harder on my tools, but you know, I can live with that. It's going to mean that you know I'm going. It's going to give me more. Um, more time before I need to do fret leveling jobs and that kind of stuff on it. So, so that covers my hardware that I've selected for my build. Um, what I'll do is I'll give you a wee quick run through of uh, what I've done already. 
I'll switch to a voiceover because I've only got photographs, but I'll, I'll run through that and that'll, uh, that'll pretty much take you up to where I'm at just now, you know, throw in some time lapse stuff as well. Okay, I've been doing the carve at home and actually starting to assemble the guitar here. So, as I said, this is my entry for the unofficial uh, Great Guitar Build Off, so I hope you enjoy it. So, you'll see here with the first photograph that I um, had a couple of different body shapes marked onto the blank, but marked out the PRS outline, uh, roughed out on the bandsaw, and then tidied it up on the outer table just to get the final uh, out, the kind of perimeter shape. Um, then into college, started hogging out the cavities. Um, we've got one pickup cavity nearly done. Neck cavity I'd taken out with a fossil, but just uh, remove a lot of the material. And then just nibbled away uh, with, the, with the router. Cut a couple of, I think it was about three or four passes. Plenty of sawdust, so I was quite happy about that. Um, moving on to the neck blank. Again, using a number, I think it was a 6 or a 7, I think I used to, to square it off. Um, got my lines in, roughed out in the bandsaw, and then took the router over it again, put the treasured cavity in, and, you know, fine fitting and stuff, and that pretty much took us up to March. This is me working at home, um, just getting the final calf lines in, and this is me actually just starting to get the, the calf done with my shuttle. Okay, so that pretty much brings brings it up to up to speed. You you everything that you've seen is, is where I'm at. So anything from now on is what I'm doing um, from here on in. In the next episode, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting this um, fretboard thickened, and we'll get it the fretboard uh, the fret slots cut into it. I'll also be doing a bit of inlay work as well. Uh, I have the tools here for it. 
never done anything. So I'm going to do a practice run, you'll see that, and then you'll actually see me cutting into this and getting the inlay done. Um, but for the time being, I want to thank you for staying tuned, and if you can, hit that subscribe button, and it'll help my channel just get off, uh, off to a good start. Uh, you never know, many years to come, you might you might have bragging rights saying, no, oh, I was one of the first people to like his channel, so I uh, really would appreciate it. Any comments as well, obviously it would be my first video, um, I'm still trying to find my feet format wise, so if there's anything that you did like, let me know, uh, if there's anything that you didn't like, likewise, let me know as well. Uh, it's not until you're this side of the camera when you realise how done it is when you're trying to, uh, try to get your message across, so uh, hats off to the guys that do it, you know, that I've got X amount of subscribers and, you know, they make it look so natural, so it's, it's no natural for me, so... Uh, Hopefully I'll get better with time. So for the time being, thanks very much. Um, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. See you later. Right, Mark, this is maple. It's not mahogany, it's maple.